whether we are in a war, war economy, should be in a war economy, or um, why people are calling it that. And again, he, I, I you know, I'm trying not to be opinionated, but on this, I have talked to a lot of people. So I know that I'm, I'm speaking for other wiser minds than myself out there, that this is not the time to use that term either. If you are going to need to go into a higher mode, and that could easily be because the war doesn't look anywhere close to being over, what do you have next? I mean, if you yeah. are going to have to ask people to make some personal sacrifices for this, um, what's your next it's step? It's kind of insulting as well, isn't it? In some it's, sense. It's okay, like... so here's the other thing. All this money you're talking about spending on arms, none of that was approved by citizens. This was given out of the EU budget that's already there. So you, you did also didn't involve the average person in approving whether these arms should go to Ukraine or not. And therefore to then ask them to sacrifice for something you never told them they were doing in the first place. Again, I just, the messaging department is on vacation already, I think, um, because they haven't, I, you just find this with the European Union in general, they don't explain things to people and then they wonder why people don't understand or don't care. Um, I think this is a perfect example. This is a very serious issue and, and you know, every European should be paying attention, but this is not the way to make them do it. And you, you individual countries have not, um, in the case of, of this joint weapons procurement, this doesn't, you know, this doesn't affect the average person. When you're talking about voting for politicians who support continuing to fund, you know, assistance to Ukraine or not, that's where the average person needs to pay attention, needs to be informed as to what their politicians politicians are doing. This was not voted on by, you know, everyday politicians back back in towns where if you had a wartime economy, people would be feeling it. They're not. Even in yeah. the even in the countries like Estonia, which is giving 1% of its GDP incredibly to Ukraine assistance, the average person um does not feel um the pain of that so directly and they want they are fully in support of it. They've given up I think all their highway refurbishment um it, to to give um you know to get to give assistance to ukraine now that's a place where you'd be feeling sort of a wartime economy but that's not what Breton is talking about i just think yeah. there needs to be a connection with the average citizen if you want people to understand what's at stake in ukraine and why your government is supporting it or or not because otherwise there can be a real shift in political tides and sentiments that's especially the truth with elections well. coming up especially with elections coming up i think this is really short-sighted yeah, I really agree. Terry, listen, I know you're busy. You're a proper expert on this stuff. And I really appreciate you joining the show and giving your expertise. Thank you. Big um, fun, Jack. Happy to support you. Good. Good. Uh, to be on Jack Perrick Live, I can make some time. Oh, sorry, don't you. I love you. Thanks, mate. Be I really soon. appreciate it. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you next week.